behalf of the National Football League, I, I want to welcome you guys this morning um, for coming here. I remember sitting here last year in the back, um, in the room next door. I, I learned a lot from just a lot of you. Listening to coaches, where are you from, where do you coach, uh, what region of the country, um, everyone's, everyone's fighting for the same purpose, to bring this game together, to bring communities together. Uh, a lot of you don't know my story, but uh, I was born in Cameroon, West Africa, and uh, my mother was a bilingual secretary. I worked for the uh, Cameroon Embassy, and I uh, came here when I was uh, five years old. I didn't know how to speak English. Uh, I learned how to speak English watching uh, Happy Days on TV. <laughs> you know, I, want, I wanted to be the Fonz. <laughs> but I was too heavy as a kid to play. You know, growing up in D.C., we had a D.C. Uh, Boys and Girls Club. Uh, growing up in D.C., I was too heavy because of, you know, weight limits. So I didn't play organized football until 10th grade. And, you know, this game gave me confidence, a uh, sense of purpose, uh, being able to be a part of a team, focus, direction. And at a time when I was in 10th grade, you know, 1986 or so, uh, just an African-American male was told he was more likely to go to jail than go to college. And I think in some of the major cities in the United States, that, that's still true. I mean, that, that stat is still out there. Um, and the end result wasn't guaranteed. You know, it wasn't guaranteed that I was going to go to college, earn a scholarship, play in the NFL, uh, provide for my family, you know, be able to meet the President of the United States. Uh, none of that's guaranteed. And I think a lot of today's uh, landscape, uh, you, you, I'm sure by the parents you deal with, it's about the end result and not about the process. And you guys are here because it's about the process learning how the game is improving, le learning how it's getting better, learning best practices. One of my favorite coaches, Marty Schottenheimer, who uh, Carl Peterson, uh, who was the head coach when Carl Peterson was, was GM of the Chiefs, was one of my favorite coaches. Uh, when I got to San Diego, I was 31. So you're 31, you're, that's old in football. I mean, you're, you're, you're getting replaced by a first round pick or they're trying to push you out. But uh, Marty respected what I did well. He respected my leadership. You know, they were a three and 13 football team and they only had two players you could even recognize. You know, this quarterback from uh, Purdue who was who was, was getting pushed out, wasn't very good yet, he hadn't proven himself, Drew Brees. Uh, they just drafted a rookie, uh, Phil Rivers. Uh, we had four quarterbacks on the roster. Doug Flutie was a, another backup. And we had this tailback, uh, Ladane Thompson, who you didn't even have to really block for him, you just have to get in front of a guy. And uh, that, that's what I appreciate. When you're 31 and blocking for a, a good run, but you want to make sure he hits the hole pretty quick. But one thing Marty always said is that you just, you don't win with the best quarterback. You don't win with the best receiver, the best running back, not even with the best offensive line. You win with the best people. You win with the best people who are committed to the mission, the vision, the purpose. And you guys have come here because you are committed to this mission of saving this game. I mean, there's 600 people in this room that are responsible for over a million people that play a youth or high school football. And um, I want you guys to give yourselves a round of applause uh, right now for just committing yourself to being here.